like, comment and subscribe. Pablo Escobar's final 24 hours. Seems very interesting, to be fair. So let's see. What happened on the day he died? In 1993, everybody wanted Pablo Escobar dead. The United States, rival cartels, the Colombian authorities, a ragtag vigilante group oh, of me. bloodthirsty civilians. Everyone. Ooh. But there was one big problem. No one knew where he was. The notorious drug lord had somehow managed to keep himself perfectly hidden, and he would remain that way until he made a ridiculous error. An Ooh. error so ridiculous it cost him his life. And to this day, makes everyone wonder what the king of cocaine was thinking in the last 24 hours of his life. In this video, I'll try to paint a picture of what I believe the last 24 hours of Pablo Escobar's life looked like, based on police testimony, family testimony, and depictions in the media. Happy birthday to the king. On the barrio rooftops of a hot Medellin afternoon, this what a fucking intro that was. iconic picture was taken, but just 24 hours earlier, things were very very different. That's right. 24 hours before his death, the King of Coke was celebrating his birthday, but not in the way he'd done it for the previous 16 years mm. as a drug lord, or the previous 43 years of his life for that matter, as a relatively free person. Relatively free because Don Pablo had been on the run for quite some time now. From 1983 to 1991, the drug lord played an elaborate and mostly violent game of hide-and-seek with the Colombian government. Resisting uh, yeah. every attempt at extradition to the U.S., Escobar killed thousands of civilians, ordered the Ooh. execution of some 250 Medellin policemen, snuffed the Fuck lives yeah. of two major Colombian politicians, kidnapped the daughter of a former president, and blew up a civilian airplane in 1989 after wrongly believing that another uncooperative politician was on board the plane. Fuck Escobar's yeah. guiding principle had always been a bribe or a bullet. And soon enough, the Colombian state were forced to strike a bargain with the drug lord. Escobar would not be extradited if he agreed to surrender himself and do jail time in Colombia. However, he was also permitted to build his own prison. So, the what? kingpin constructed La Catedral, an entertainment home-like mansion that had a spa, a sports field, a nightclub, a casino, and a zoo. And he had a ton of visitors, mostly women, and on special occasions, important guests like the football legend Diego Maradona. However, Escobar's time with La well, Catedral the King would Kirk be and Maradona. He executed Who would have possibly thought? In cold blood on prison premises, and right under the nose of the Colombian authorities who were supposed to be guarding him. Of course, there was an international outrage, and of course, the Colombian government would move to extradite him to the U.S. But Escobar escaped just in time, becoming a fugitive once more, and over the span of 16 months, shuffling between countless haciendas he owned all over Colombia. These were the very same haciendas that had housed his family while he was in a custom-made prison. And now, he was here, in his final hours, celebrating his birthday, alone, with no party, and no family. Escobar... I'm pretty sure there's some statistic that you're always more likely to die on your birthday than you are on any other day. So this is quite... I don't know, Bar's to be honest. is being held captive. Speaking of his family, hours before his death, Escobar tried to reach out to them. And this is one important part of That's the story, right. as you'll soon find out. You see, at the mm. time, the family were okay. reportedly being held hostage by the government. And this means that their phone calls were being monitored. But how did they get here? And why weren't they with Escobar? Well, it mm. had everything to do with the countless enemies Escobar had made over his illustrious narcotics career. On one hand, well, yeah. there was Search Block, the vengeful arm of the Colombian government specifically trained by the United States to find and capture the drug kingpin. On the other mm. hand, there was the arguably more dangerous Los Pepes, a group of vigilantes sponsored by rival cartels who were hell-bent on white being Escobar, his family, his associates, and his legacy from the face of the earth. But we'll come around to that in a second. For now, and while the drug lord was hiding, these enemies went after Escobar's family, and they were forced to flee the country. Escobar had already escaped La Catedral, and the Colombian government were unwilling to protect his family if he wouldn't surrender himself to the law. Mm. So, Escobar's family chose Germany as their asylum. However, Germany rejected them. The rejection shocked everyone, especially Escobar. Mm. The drug lord was so shocked that days before his final 24 hours, he sent someone, probably Limon to drop a tape at a radio station in Medellin where he mm. calmly scolded the European country. You can hear the pain in his voice. Of 
course, one of the citizens that Escobar was referring to was the Nazi father of his colleague, Carlos Leder, the co-founder of the Medellin cartel. Eventually, Escobar's you know. family would find themselves back in the hands of the Colombian government, who had now chosen to use them as bait to smoke out the elusive drug lord. No wonder Escobar had become so anxious in his final days on Earth. There was a ticking time bomb hovering over his family. They were unsafe, and as much as anyone might have tried to avoid the topic, the fact was, it was Escobar's fault. So, on the 2nd of yeah. December, 1993, Escobar woke up to a meal of spaghetti cooked by his aunt, who loved him unconditionally. After the meal, Escobar picked up his phone and dialed his family. The search block are plotting. While this was going on, the infamous search block had gotten wind of his phone call and had begun triangulating to get the exact location of El Padrino. Ever yes. since it was created in 1986, the search block had been the bane of Escobar's existence. At first, it was the complete opposite. The search block was created to be an incorruptible arm of the law, tasked with taking Don Pablo down, headed by Colonel Hugo Martinez and comprising 200 Colombians who were non-natives of Medellin and didn't know each other or the city. However, it was a suicide mission for Colonel Martinez because Pablo practically owned Medellin. In the first 15 days of his command, Escobar killed 30 of the colonel's 200 men. And after this, Escobar tried to bribe the colonel, but the man couldn't be bribed. So, Escobar threatened the colonel's family. Colonel Martinez responded by waging an extensive war against the King of Coke. Over the years, Martinez's task force managed to isolate Escobar by dismantling his Medellin drug cartel and conducting round-the-clock electronic surveillance of the Kingpin's radio communications. However, there were rumors that the search block weren't acting alone in this last mission. Rumor had it that a group called Los Pepes was also involved in the hunt. And in fact, mm. they were the reason Escobar sought the safety of his family in Germany since they had been hunting down the associates of the drug lord. And let me be the first to tell you, their methods were ruthless. Los Pepes was sponsored by the Cali cartel, a former ally of Escobar's Medellin cartel. They publicly offered cash rewards for information on Pablo and his key associates, and began broadcasting threats against the drug lord's family. They were involved in the destruction of two haciendas that belonged to Hermilda Gaviria, Escobar's mother, and they mailed bombs to many of his close associates. At the top of this mayhem, Los Pepes publicly hanged Escobar's sicarios, thinning his defenses. Martinez's search block might have been the bane of Escobar's existence, but it was Los Pepes that brought death to his doorstep. The last mm. stand. Everything was now in place. Escobar was a fugitive in hiding with no place to run as all his assets were seized. His family were under the thumb of the government with 24-7 surveillance. Escobar had made an incriminating call to said family and the search block and a super deadly group committed to the annihilation of Don Pablo were reportedly working hand in hand, triangulating the phone signal to end the reign of terror of this monster once and for all. It was the final minutes of the world's most powerful and influential drug lord. And boy, was it going to be a showdown. On Team Red, we have Escobar communicating with his son on the phone. And on Team Blue, we have the leader of the search block, Hugo Martinez, communicating with his own son, who had the task of tracking down the location of Escobar. It was a father-son standoff that was about to be written oh, in blood. And it was Martinez's son that saw Escobar first, a shadow of his former self, the drug lord looked nothing like the clean-cut, mustachioed figure that everyone had come to fear over the years. It took the search block a very short amount of time to get to the neighborhood. By 2.57 p.m., mere minutes after Escobar had made the call, they arrived at his location. In fact, Escobar was still on the phone when he realized that his aunt's building was surrounded. Everyone was fully armed. They were expecting heavy gunfire from the drug lord's army of cartel soldiers. However, they would spot just his bodyguard. El Limon, who had abandoned his boss, was running out of the building and fleeing to the rooftops in a bid to save his life. He was oh, immediately shit. killed. Then, the search block stormed the house and blew the front door open with explosives. Escobar greeted them with gunfire and took off for the rooftops too in an attempt to escape to a side street behind the row of houses. But he never made it. He found himself cornered on the rooftop and in a bid to save his life, he opened fire on the search block and the Colombian police. The search block returned fire on Escobar, and he fell flat. According to the official account, an unnamed member of the search block got close to Pablo and gave him the fatal shot that killed him. Just 24 hours ago, he was celebrating his 44th birthday, but now he was dead. The aftermath. But what if I told you it's possible that Escobar wasn't killed, and that an alternate version what? of the story was actually what transpired? Don't take, oh, it from me. take it from the son of the man himself. His brothers 
and, well, basically, his whole family. His two brothers, Roberto well, Escobar and Fernando Sanchez Arellano, insisted that his death had been by suicide, claiming that the location of his fatal wound was enough proof it had been self-inflicted. One of them would say, mm. he committed suicide, he did not get killed. During all the years they went after him, he would say to me every day that if he was really cornered without a way out, he would shoot himself through the ear. Granted, mm. they could be biased about their vantage point, especially since they weren't at the shootout scene. But let's just take a look at some of their claims, and at the end, you tell me if you're not thinking what I'm thinking. Mm. The most compelling evidence is that of Sebastián Marroquín, the son of Escobar. Sebastián was the one whom the drug lord was talking to in the moments before he died. Mm. Now, according to Sebastián, his father was well aware their phones were tapped and monitored by the CIA and the Colombian authorities. He also says his father had told him repeatedly in the past to avoid phones. On the day his father called, Sebastián says he declined the call seven times because of the apparent danger, but his father insisted on speaking with him. Another clue that mm. Sebastián brings to the table is the fact that his father had taught him in the past how to commit suicide if they were ever captured. He had told his son to shoot himself in the right ear. And can you guess where the gunshot wounds were on Escobar's body? His oh, leg, shit. his torso, and his right ear. I don't know about you, but I find it quite unlikely that the hail of bullets that rained on Pablo somehow conveniently found their way into his ears. The right me, ear is a specific place. Escobar understood place. that the walls were closing in, and so I would say that it's possible that he strategically chose the day after his birthday to make a call he knew would take his life. If you ask me, I would say it's possible that the vile and ruthless king of cocaine, Pablo Escobar, sacrificed his life to save his family. It's possible that Don Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria chose to die the same way he chose to live on his own terms. Now, what do you think happened? Yeah, he almost definitely shot himself through the air. Especially if you go close to someone to kill them, you wouldn't aim at like your ear. Surely if he was executed by a police, it'd be actually on his head. Very interesting video. And very different to any other video that I watch. But also, incredible to be fair.